17 is the graphing of uh, rational functions. So rational functions, if you remember, always kind of take this shape, right? Whenever you put the error, uh, the variable in the denominator, there's going to be issues with, um, with dividing by zero. And so it always creates these asymptotes, and that's what you see those dotted lines are. Those are basically kind of like uh, board lines in the sand. You know, you cannot pass those. You can't equal that. And so, excuse me. <clears throat> they just kind of um, they won't they won't let you through. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to remember how these guys change. Now you'll notice then that we have something attached to the x here while the x is in the denominator, and we have something attached by addition or subtraction on the outside, and then we have a number on the top. Now this would be uh, similar to the a of a quadratic function where it tells you how wide it is and in fact that 4 is going to tell us how far it is away from the center of the um, kind of like where the crosshairs of the two asymptotes are. This guy tells us if we're going to move right or left and this guy tells us if we're going to move up or down. This guy's basically in parentheses because he's in the denominator but this guy is not. So this guy we want to do the exact opposite of what it says here. This is negative 1 so we're going to go to the right one this says we're going to drop one, okay? So that's to the right one, and then that says down one, okay? So this means that the whole structure of a rational function, okay, the whole, this, this piece right here, that guy, is going to move over to the right one and down one. Now the four tells us how far away we are from the center. And so what we're doing is, is we're trying to remember that you multiply the coordinates to get four. That's what makes this an inverse relationship, okay? We need to, now if I multiply both sides by x, I would get this, okay? So this and this are the same thing. So what I'm seeing here is if I ignore the negative one, negative one, what I'm doing is, is I want the x and the y coordinates in my new position to multiply to get four. So here we are. Uh, now this one is definitely an over to the right one and then down one. So this could be it. But let's see if my x and y coordinate, when I multiply them, do I get four? Now that looks kind of like right there. That just does not look like two times two. Two times two is four, obviously. So let's let's try another one. Now that when the curves are on these two sides, that means that it would have had to have been a negative. Okay like number eight. Eight is going to have to have the two curves on the upper left and the lower right. So we're actually only looking for curves in the lower left, upper right. So that means that it could be this guy, um, but it sure can't be this guy. So it's not going to be him because that's... So it's got to be one of these two. But my guess then is that, you know what, I don't have my contacts, but maybe this right here... Let's see, we're over one, on one. So from our new position, are we over to, oh, I see, okay. Uh, wait. Oh yeah, okay. This is a multiplication of uh, one times four, but we are over one, and then we go all the way up to four. Okay, so we're one unit away from the center here. Okay. So the answer is A. Um, this guy is we're going to move to the left two and we'll go up two and we have a negative sign so this means that our curves will be on those two sides and we just need to see that they multiply to equal one. Okay. So let's see. Could be this guy. Is he over to the left two and up two? Could be that guy. Um, when we multiply it, do we get 1? Now, I'm going to actually look at this a little bit more carefully here. If I move over, this goes by 2, so 1 and 1. So, yeah, well, it looks like that's it. Um, yep, this is the guy. That's, that's the one. Kind of lucky. Um, well, actually, it'll actually be a little easier to teach this. Um, going straight to the graphs rather than the multiple choice. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to find, we're going to see that x equaling positive 1 would actually give us a, a asymptote, so we're going to do this. 
Okay, at positive 1, that would be a division of 0, so I cannot have x equal 1. But then also, because I'm moving up 2, this means that I would have an asymptote there. So I have moved my entire curves, both of them, over to the right one and up 2. Now when I graph this, um, I know that it's a positive, so positive ones have that. So I'm going to, oh, Alex, hey, what's up? All right, oh, just got a visit from one of the seniors. So um, let's go. Uh, where were we? We got the crosshairs. So now what we got to do is we got to pay attention to the 4. And the 4 tells us that if I'm moving 1 over here, then I need to multiply over here, then I need to multiply 1 times 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then if I was multiplying by 4, I would multiply by 1. And if I would multiply by 2, I'd multiply by 2. So this right here tells us how close we get to the asymptotes. Okay. And we would just execute this guy over here as well. Just make sure it's a reflection. So that 1, 4, 1, 4. hope that's right. Nope, nope, right here. 1, 4, 1, 4, 2, 2. So this guy would look like this. Okay? All right, now over here, looks like we're not going up at all, but we are moving over. We're not going up, but we are moving over to the right, 1. So there's our new crosshairs there. Um, and it's negative, so this means that my curves are going to be here and here. And it looks like when I want to do my curve. Now, if you just drew a curve like this, you realize that you're probably going to be pretty accurate, right? The 2 only gives you just a more refined approach, okay? So I know that uh, 1 times 2 and 2 times 1... That's, that's pretty much all that I can do. I can do 1 half times 4, okay, which would take me to here and like here, or no, right there. Okay, so this guy would look pretty close, pretty close, or closer to the, um, to the crosshairs here. And then this guy over here would be uh, 1 and 2, 1 and 2, all right? And that's pretty, that's pretty much good enough, all right? Okay, so where are we at? Seven minutes. Um, all right, I can do 21 and 22 here. Um, now we're going to simplify each expression. Now, just um, these are normally a sticking point for people. Uh, traditionally, they're kind of hard, and I think people overthink these a little too much. So um, even though you see a quadratic in the denominator, they are the same quadratic. Okay, they are the same. So... What that means you can do is you can immediately combine them by saying 5x plus 1 minus x minus 5. Now remember that this negative is being distributed to the x and the 5 there. So you can actually combine those. So that would be 4x minus 4. Okay. Now I still have the denominator. He is the same. Okay. All right, but there's going to be, you're not going to see this answer. Now, the reason is, is because, and I should probably use a separate sheet of, um, I'll use a separate sheet of paper for these guys. The reason is that I can do some factoring. Now, I can take a 4 out of both of these, and I'm going to go upwards here. So 4, and then that's x minus 1. Remember, I'm taking a 4 out of both terms. Okay. But then also, this guy right here can be factored, I believe. Let's try. Let's see. F uh, factors of 4 that add up to negative 5. And that would be negative 4 and negative 1, okay? So this means x minus 4 and x minus 1. All right, looks like we've got x minus 1 here and x minus here. So x minus 1 here, x minus 1 here, those cancel out. So my final answer is actually 4 over x minus 4. And that 4 and that 4 do not cancel out because these guys are bundled together in a parenthesis, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we're going to watch out for the same thing here in 22. These guys have a like common denominator, so what I can do is I can just add those. Now, I, this is nice because I can just say that's 2x minus 10. <coughs> x, x plus x is 2x. Negative 6 plus negative 4 is just negative 10. And I can actually factor a 2 out of that, so that's x minus 5. Now, what I'm looking for is that there is a possibility that x minus 5 is one of the factors 
in the denominator below if if possible okay so these guys are the same so I'm gonna go ahead and factor that um, factors of 18 that add up to 9 that's 3 and 6 3 and 6 so x plus 3 and x plus 6 nothing cancels out so that's it that is your final answer you would leave it like that not even the 2 cancels out okay all right we'll stop there